This week on The Review, the story behind one filmmaker and his decade-long partnership with a Gaza fixer, the news you've been clicking and sharing, and a remarkable online report on Russia's new spice drug. Hello and welcome to The Review, the show that goes behind the scenes here at Al Jazeera, but also lets you do the talking. We're taking your questions and comments to the news and filmmakers at the channel. This week, we're talking fixers, the local men and women on the ground who really make the story possible for journalists all over the world. My real motivation was just to, to bring to light sort of the hidden heroes of the news business, fixers, you know, people that, that, you, that you never see. But first, here's a day-by-day -day roundup of the news stories of ours you've been sharing with the online community. Simultaneously, the term arrested by an exact number of pass... Mogadishu is a city used to violence, but in this latest attack, a vehicle laden with explosives rammed through a hotel's front gate, then a suicide bomber blew himself up inside. Caracas Mayor Antonio Ledesma, arrested by intelligence police dressed in camouflage, has been indicted for conspiracy to plot violence. State-run television said the conspiracy included an assassination attempt on Maduro. Under the cover of night, the Turkish military crossed the border into Syria. The tomb of Suleiman Shah was left under Turkish control when the French drew the borders of modern Syria, now citing increased fighting in the area between ISIL and the Kurds, the Turkish government decided to evacuate 40 or so troops stationed at the shrine. The exact number of passengers was not immediately known, as the ferry company does not maintain passenger records. Officials here say as many as 150 people may have been on the ferry when it sank. Yet again, people have been forced to move from their homes in Syria. This time, it is the Assyrian Christians, after they were overrun by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. While fences keep the animals at bay, the spies have broken through. A secret report from December 2009 says they have total freedom of access to ministries, parliament and security installations, posing threats to national security. The term fixer floats through the journalist lexicon, but oftentimes goes undefined. It can mean interpreter, driver, mediator, negotiator, or even friend, and often all of those things. They're the locals on the ground who help visiting journalists in every way possible to get the story told. And sometimes the story is so close to home that it is their home. That's what we see this week in the film Gaza Fixer, a chronicle of survival. Over a 10 year period, filmmaker George Azar turns the camera on his fixer, Raid Athamne, a six time war survivor, as it quite candidly helps document the fate of his family through massacres, destruction and survival. We caught up with George via Skype to help us define the term fixer. I first met Rod when I went down there on a photo assignment and I remember getting in the car with him the first time and he would just was just sort of a non-stop stream of chatter. <laughs> Raj, like a lot of fixers, does a number of jobs. One of the things that he does in the most basic way is he drives the car while I'm filming. Being local, he gives you credibility when you're in places that are unfamiliar. The other thing that he does is that he has like the names and numbers of all the people, that the important people that one would want to interview at his fingertips and can call them up and has a personal relationship with them. And there are personal qualities that a fixer needs to have uh, especially working in a war zone, um, physical courage, um, a real commitment to the story, to sticking with the story when, when times are really hard. He's remained essentially unchanged as a character, although he's had real highs and real lows. And it's just, you know, his, his tenacity and his, um, you know, his courage in the face of just really insurmountable obstacles to living. Having things that we in the West just take for granted, you know, uh, basic stability of home, you know, a decent job, a decent income, the ability to travel, uh, those are things that have all been denied to him. And 
But he's never he's never lost his spark for life. I'm not till Allah. Allah. No way to get me. Because he's still him is martyr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there came times when, for example, when his uh, his home was destroyed, uh, and the other time when uh, when his family was massacred in the artillery bombardment, when I was really conflicted about the need to have the camera on rotted and to record these moments for posterity, for history, and, you know, my feelings for him as a friend. Um, and it was very hard to keep the camera... The hardest thing I've ever done, really, as a journalist, was, was keeping the camera on rotted during these really, really terrible moments. <laughs> And I, if you watch the film, you'll notice there are times when the, I let the camera just sort of drop to the ground and the camera is rolling. You can hear the sound, but, uh, you know, I was, I was comforting him and I was being there for him as a friend. Um, but I still needed to keep the camera rolling. It's one thing to say that, you know, 2,200 people were killed in the last war, but it's only until you know their names and until you know their stories and until you can feel with them that, you know, a person can really grasp uh, the real enormity of the tragedy there. As ever, we've been closely monitoring the Al Jazeera website for your comments on our web coverage. And this week, it's a story on spice that has been heating things up. But it's not what you think. Spice is the term used to describe a new, highly addictive and often deadly narcotic that is sweeping through Russia and proving very difficult to counter. With almost 4,000 likes on Facebook and hundreds of comments like this one from Yukon Cornelius saying the use of the term spice over bath salts is confusing, we decided to speak to the author of the article and clear up what exactly is spice and how did he go about reporting on what is usually a secretive and faceless online business. When Russian President Vladimir Putin banned the use of spice a few weeks ago, journalist Mansour Morovalev thought the drug trade he'd been following for years would dry up. You don't usually expect people to kind of disobey what he says, but the spice uh, trade is still there. You go to uh, a grocery store to buy some bread, and on the asphalt you see a new phone number that says mix spice or there's just a smiley face right next to it and you instantly know what they're selling. Morovlev, who used to work at the UN Office for Drug Control and Crime Prevention in Central Asia, said the drug is highly dangerous because its basic chemical composition can be altered. It's more like a plastic, you know, it's this is a substance you can manipulate, you can shape it, you can change its uh, uh, qualities almost in any way you want. There's been reports about people uh, being in coma for six months, about people jumping uh, uh, out of their windows after just a couple of whiffs. So uh, what we're dealing uh, with here is a totally new Frankenstein's monster. The characters in Morovalov's piece admitted the drug was completely unpredictable, a term repeated by many users. He found Roman, one of those who agreed to be interviewed, at an Addicts Anonymous meeting run by a local priest. Roman made an impression. Uh, he was not uh, probably a rocket scientist. Uh, he probably looked like a some of those uh, math uh, users from Breaking Bad, but he, he, he wanted to share his experiences with me. And I, I saw he was burdened and uh, he really wanted to get out to get the monkey off his back. An especially strong strain of spice has killed more than 40 Russians since September and landed some 2,000 in hospitals. Russian officials have alleged that a Ukrainian regional governor is implicated in the distribution of this killer spice in Russia. But to me, the claim does not uh, seem real because there's so much anti-Ukrainian hysteria now on, on television and in the uh, government-controlled newspapers that this is just yet another anti-Ukrainian move. The fact that it's been made probably shows that, uh, uh, that authorities cannot counter 
the spice trade. Morovalev says he hasn't encountered any raids over spice during his reporting, but has seen pro-Kremlin youth hunt down and attack spice dealers. He says the real problem will be the enforcement of these new laws online. What we're dealing with is this new uh, universe of uh, drug trade, of illicit drug trade that exists online and is very difficult to control. If you want to comment on that story or any others, head on over to our website at aljazeera.com forward slash review or on facebook.com forward slash aje.review and on Twitter at AJReview. See you next week.